What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the spot where we kick back and react to all kinds of different things. All right, so what we got going on today? We're about to check out another Lindsay Nicole animal video. This one is the biggest bamboozler in the animal kingdom. Continuing on the WTF is this series. Although I'm pretty sure I'm going out of order at this point. So, but we're enjoying these. I know I'm enjoying these. So anyway, let's go ahead and check this out. See what information Lindsay's got for us today. Let's go. Hey, I got a new outfit on. Well, just a shirt. A new shirt. And before you ask, I am not a Falcons fan. I got this jersey at a massive discount at Ross. I don't watch football. I don't like sports. I just wear the jerseys like an asshole. All right. <laughs> so last year, I was a ninth grade That's biology funny. teacher, which was a cool experience, but it made me realize that I don't like teaching in that setting. But without being a ninth grade biology teacher, I would have never learned about the animal that I'm talking about today. When we got to the evolution and zoology units in the class, I, of course, spent way too long on them because those are the best parts and I could I was a teacher anyway I gave my students a species diversity project where they had to find species in different classifications and do a presentation on them one of my students James ended up presenting this animal and I had never heard of it before and he started the presentation by showing this video let's play it one more time in slow motion oh there's something on top of it I don't know can't tell you thought that was a spider, huh? So did that bird, and so did I. Turns out James oh. had found one of the biggest bamboozlers in the animal kingdom to do his presentation on. The spider-tailed horned viper. Also, James, if you're watching <laughs> this, I hope you're doing well, and I miss your crazy-ass questions. So the spider-tailed horned viper is relatively new to science, and of course, we know very little about them. Scientists did not know what was going on there for a while. So it's time for another segment of the history of what the fuck is this? So, the first spider-tailed horned viper was collected in western Iran in 1968. It was thrown into a jar, kind of just left in a corner for the next few years, as scientists do. And when mm -hmm. finally examining it two years later, scientists' first impression was that this snake belonged to the genus Pseudocerostes, which at the time consisted of two venomous viper species, the Persian horned viper and the field horned viper from the Middle East and Asia. I will, I will say I was not expecting that. That surprised me. I was like, whoa, decoy, okay. We see a lot of, there are a lot of animals that do that. I just didn't know if there was a snake species that did that. But I know I'm never have to worry about me. I'm like a snake with a tail pretending to be a spider. That's a double that I'm not going anywhere near. So <laughs> I'll never get caught by that thing. Uh -uh. Let's do a little Latin lesson and break down that genus name because I literally just want to show you something that's kind of unrelated. But it's going <clears throat> so. Pseudocerostes. Pseudo. We know what that means. Fake. Sham. Like, uh, pseudoscience. Fake science. Or sham science. Like, flat earth. Don't start with me. Cerostes means <laughs> having horns. There's a Cerostes in Greek mythology that is this serpent beast that had no spine, so it was extremely flexible, and it had two horns. So there's a separate snake genus called just Cerostes, and it consists of venomous snakes like this guy, the desert horned viper. Totally and completely badass. So the snakes in Pseudocerostes have sham horns or false horns is what we usually call them and you can see why they'd be considered that they're more just like little protrusions made up of multiple scales and the horns of the cerastes vipers are constructed by single modified scales that just elongated over evolutionary time but here's something that will piss you off there are three species in the cerastes genus only two of them have horns and only sometimes they just sometimes don't have fucking horns. Every time science tries to put nature in a box, she says, psych, bitch, not today. Okay, back to the history lesson. So, the scientists first thought their specimen belonged to the genus Pseudocerostes, and that it had a solifuge clinging to its tail, which at first glance, I totally get. But then they were like, mm, that's not right. Looked at it a little bit more closely and realized that the solifuge was actually some weird growth on its tail. Maybe a mutation or a tumor or caused by a parasite. And since there was only one specimen to go off of, that was good enough for them at the time. Labeled it as a Persian horned viper, and it stayed that way for the next 40 years until 2003 they found another one with the same growth it's genetic <laughs> and in 2006 they finally described it meaning they gave it its own scientific name pseudocerostes eurorachnoides let me try and say that a little bit faster pseudocerostes eurorachnoides okay. i actually got that better than i thought i would which roughly translates to a fucking mouthful we know it to be the spider-tailed horned viper or the spider viper i'm gonna stick with that for the rest of the video because that's way easier they were only known from the zone what what is the name it's always got to be complicated though why i, I never understood that I, I understand it's supposed to be like take the stuff from like i think latin or something i believe but still still i think it's a practice need to end too many tongue twisting names gross mountains which bleed into western iran and to this day 
they have only been found in Western Iraq. So without ever seeing its behavior in the wild, because all they had to go off of was two dead snakes with freaky tails, scientists already assumed that the spider viper used their tail as a caudal lure. A caudal lure is just any tail that is used as a prey lure, being mistaken for something else. Lots of animals have these. Other snakes like rattlesnakes, of course, some lizards, some sharks, the gulper eel, which I talked about in spooky specimens, but I never brought up their caudal lure. But the caudal lure of the spider snake is one of the most elaborate in the animal kingdom that we know of. So let's take a closer look at it. The whole end of the tail is just this brightly colored bowl. As we saw in the video, the rest of the viper's coloration blends in perfectly with their surrounding environment. And then around the bulb are these elongated scales that look like legs. And not to anyone's surprise, it turned out that the caudal lure assumption was correct. In 2008, a new team of scientists were able to capture a spider viper and observe it in a lab setting that mimicked its environment. Put a few birds in with the viper and essentially saw what we saw in the video. The viper was moving its tail in a way that perfectly copied the movements of a spider or an insect, which turned out to be successful very quickly. Then in 2015, another group set out to study the spider vipers in the wild. <coughs> they spent two and a half years tracking and recording what eventually led to 12 spider vipers, and they found some pretty cool stuff. First off, the caudal lure develops over time. Initially, the scales at the very end of the tails start to swell up. Then some of the scales surrounding it start to elongate, and over time, the body and the legs of the spider get more and more elaborate. Next, the caudal lure only really works on migratory birds. Research shows that the local birds seem to have learned the viper's tricks and stay away <laughs> from the bamboozlers. I know that probably seems like common sense, but it's good to know that it's following a pattern that you would expect. So when I first made a video about yeah. the viper back- Could you, Oh man, could you imagine birds, the native birds watching the, the uh, migrating birds pass by? It's like, oh, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, oh, he got him. Oh man. So sad. <laughs> you should have listened. It's that that was not a spider. <laughs> in March on TikTok, I got some comments asking, how does it know? Like, how does evolution know to form a structure that looks like a spider? And that, I think, makes for a really cool thought exercise because it doesn't know. And that's what makes it so crazy. And also, I think what makes for a great example of trying to picture or understand how evolution plays out. So if you want to try, pause the video and try to imagine how this happened. You don't have to. I can't make you do anything. I can't stop <laughs> you from not doing it. But OK, pause it now. Think about it. Is this sleepy? <laughs> That's so, funny. Obviously, we can't know for sure how this played out. We know practically nothing about them, let alone have a fossil record of them. But here's how I see it. So the viper has these normal sized horns towards the end of its tail, you know, those modified scales and little horns all over its body. Those must have been there before the spider happened, especially when you compare it to the related species, like they most definitely were there before them. Maybe at some point an individual had a mutation where some of the horns were slightly longer, not like this, but just a little bit longer than the rest, which made the tail mimic some sort of insect at least least a little bit. This attracted more prey, which led that individual to survive longer and thus pass on their genes at a higher rate to the next generation, since theoretically a longer life means more opportunities to reproduce. And then the next generation had those genes at a higher rate. Following that same pattern over time, the variation in the horn size just got more and more extreme. And as it got more extreme, chances of prey capture increased. And the accumulation of mutations and trait variations over time led to what looks like a spider. And the movement of the tail for prey capture must have followed along with that. The snake isn't aware that it looks like a spider. It just so happens to look like a spider after evolution of thousands, if not millions of years. But again, we don't know for sure. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I mean, now, yeah. That's where I understand Whether or not the snake realizes what it's, what it's doing is mimicking a spider, that's something that we wouldn't be able to tell. It's like, we can't talk to the snake. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the way they move their tail, they're pretty aware of what they're doing though. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the snake knows very well that they're mimicking a spider or at least some form of insect that they've seen of this species ends. But I thought I would introduce you to my own little spider viper that's actually a corn snake that I have in my living room. This is Tino. His name is Valentino because I got him on Valentine's Day in 2021, but I call him Tino for short. I don't care the size. I don't care how cute you might say they look, but never be me. Never going anywhere near a snake ever. Sorry. Nope. He's a corn snake. He's trying to go on my shirt right now. He's in my shirt. He's about three feet long right now. So I think he's going to end up being a little bit smaller than most other corn snakes. I don't know if you can see him in there. Okay. I put him back. He was not having it. But let me also introduce you to Koya. So this is Koya. She's about a year old and she's kind of camera shy. She's a big cat. You have anything you want to say? Anything at all? You have nothing to say? <laughs> 
Okay. And that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you think are some of the biggest bamboozlers in the animal kingdom. That is definitely gonna be a series that I end up tackling on this platform. I hope you guys liked it. And as always, you can check out my daily short form content on Instagram or TikTok and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my next long form video coming out later this week. And for now, stay curious. The world has- All right, all right. That was another good one. Another good one. All right, so yeah. I'm, like I said it before, I'm pretty sure the snake is fully aware of what they're doing, considering that they keep on doing it, and it keeps on leading to success with prey capture. <laughs> All right, but uh, that's going to do it for that one. Anyway, y'all know what to do. Go down in the comment section, let me know what y'all thought about this one, and let me know what you'd like to see me react to next. Hit that like button before you go, share this video with everyone you know, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, so till next time, take care of yourselves, and I'm out of here.